that place seriously because of the what I call the senseless hostilities Eastern Europe the invasion of Ukraine by Putin Putin and his men in Russia I look at the humanitarian and the aid crisis that may likely ensue as a result of this senseless war. I don't know in the first place what anyone stands to gain in destroying another man's land. Despite several warnings to that effect that Russia is trying to invade Ukraine with their president Vladimir Putin denied but on February 24th we saw all air let loose in Ukraine Russian armies invaded Ukraine started shelling bombing bombing and killing people innocent so as at day 20 of the hostility over 3 million people have been displaced from their home. You know what that means? 3 million people. Husband, you know, saying bye to their wives and children kissing their daddy bye till gone nowhere. And today, my heart bleeds. My heart bleeds seriously because or the war against health care and health facilities and services in Ukraine. We are just coming out of COVID. Many countries are still grappling with the effect of COVID-19, economic losses and so on and so forth. They are away in another senseless battle showing our strength of mind, bullying Ukrainians. Let's look at the health implication and the humanitarian crisis that may likely ensue in this war. There are, there are many health challenges, issues, including rape, that may not be reported now. Displacement of children, of the vulnerables and in recent times from on the from the 18 19 28 day of the war <clears throat> we've seen russian forces deliberately targeting civilian populace their infrastructure hospitals air centers and destroying its services which is not to be in war situation are they the one fighting the war what does putin and his men stand to gain at the end of this barbaric hostility against the people of ukraine you have accused them of wanting to join nato you want to control somebody, are there no better way of doing that rather than destroying the same people you, are, you seek to protect, destroying their infrastructures and everything. The health consequence, the mental health issue that will arise from this are better imagined. As at the 20 of the war, we are expecting over 7 million people to be displaced of 40 million population of Ukraine, which will make it the biggest displacement since Bankers War in the 1990s. Is that what our world needs now? Now that we are just coming out, but not fully, of the effect of COVID-19, nobody is talking about COVID-19 again because of war aren't we going to lose all the gains we have made 
over COVID-19? What about the children that the receiving end? It is said that over 3,000 deaths have taken place in Ukraine in the last 21 days, between February 24 and today. And it's expected that 80,000 women will give birth in the next three months. For how long will it be? Now let's look at the immunization schedule. Aren't we going back to the dark age, the dark era? There are children born to these women will not be able to assess fascination, preventable childhood killer diseases. Is that what our world needs now? The war in Syria caused our world in 2017. Most of the regions that have certified polio free are now grappling or are trying to curtail polio in their region and in their country again, especially in Nigeria. My heart bleeds for vulnerables in Ukraine. About a week ago, the Russian forces destroyed maternity and children hospital in Mariupol, where it is said about four or five people died. It may be more than that. This is war situation. Destroying health care facility. You were even shown the picture of a woman in labor and how the woman was separated on to bring out the lifeless baby. And at the end of the day, the woman couldn't make it. This war should stop. The eight implications of this war are better imagined. The economic loss and the mental health issue that will arise as a result of the war against people of Ukraine. Now in economic world, most of African nations depend on Ukraine, Russia, for wheat, for wheat. We are expecting the, the prices of bread and other related you know, staples to go up. What about petrol, PMS, and crude oil generally? It is also expected that the price will go up very soon because of the sanction imposed on Russia. As at the last count, there are close to over 5,000 sanctions on Russia alone. And it is not the best time to be a Russian citizen because your card is deactivated, your MasterCard is not working, Valve is not working, most of the international payment system aren't, aren't working. Is that what our world wants? Is that what we need now? <clears throat> Let's look at the COVID vaccination. It is said that Ukraine has less than 40% coverage. Aren't we going to see a resurgence in COVID cases very soon? Can our people are crammed together in train station? People just want to leave their country. Look at the IDP camps. How people are crammed together. This one must stop. What about the children that you have know, been killed? The elderly, the aged, the pregnant women, the effect of this war on them and their health. Imagine a woman that is having pregnancy induced hypertension and has to run from a location to another place. In this ongoing war against people of Ukraine, our structures have been hit badly. And at the last count, the WHO statistics said over 25 S facilities have been hit. Five ambulances. What do we stand to gain in that? Do we know how many numbers of healthcare workers have died or have been injured in this whole milieu? It is time to stop this madness. It is time to stop these hostilities. 
No, imagine people that are in need, that are on life support, and electricity is cut off. There is no water supply. What do you think will happen to them? My heart bleeds every day. Anytime I wash on Wion, Al Jazeera, BBC, CNN, ABC, NBC, all those media houses, the atrocities, the killings, the bombing, the shelling, the wanton destruction of lives and properties going on in Ukraine. Even the sanctions imposed on Russia which may later have effect on the citizens. Most Russians are leaving their country by her bliss. Her bliss is sincerely. This one must stop. Brothers, Ukraine, Russia, Poland, those guys are living together in peace. They want to control a sovereign nation. Is there no better way of doing that? Killing and destroying them. And because your armies are not winning the war, you resorted into shelling and destroying civilian population and their infrastructures. That is wickedness. Now let's look at how many people that have died. Let's look at the statistics from United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. It is said that about 644 deaths have been recorded. Of the number, we have 46 children that have died so far. Let's look at the injured. We have 1,884 that have died as at the 20 of the war. And how many are children? My heart bleeds for the nation of Ukraine, for the healthcare system in Ukraine and in Europe. Now, of about 3,000 to 4,000 beds, what happened to children that are not able to access humanization? What about the consumables? the antibiotics that will be needed which may be out of stock the WHO, UNFPA and UNICEF have condemned in strong terms the shelling, the destruction of healthcare facilities and disruption to health services in Ukraine and they have called for immediate ceasefire and they also call for immediate cessation of hostility towards health care. They call it barbaric. For anyone to deliberately target hospitals, health centers, and disrupt health care services in any conflict. But what I'm saying is stop this madness. Stop this war. Stop killing children. Stop killing pregnant women. Allow the elderly to die peacefully. Will this madness prevent them from joining NATO? <laughs> I'm not sure. And it will also send a signal to people around Eastern Europe that it's better we fast track our application to join NATO. Now they can defend us when a big brother or a big brother begin to bully us. We have a lot to contend with. We are not completely out of COVID-19. I want to say from here, I stand with the people of, of Ukraine in this. I stand with you. My heart bleeds for you. And I pray for you to my heart that God will send help to you. President Zelensky, I do my heart for you. You are a man against all odds that have been speaking. I have been talking to your people. There is no bad peace. There is no good war. We are the losers. We, all of us. The Africa that depend on Russia and Ukraine. Most Africans are in Ukraine studying. Some studying medicine, law, and so on and so forth. What happened to their education? 
the thing you are not concerned is this Nigeria you have issue in the northeast in Nigeria well we know but this concerns all of us please whatever we know to do you know how to pray pray to end this war don't provoke war the aggression against the people of Ukraine thank you very much for listening to this so I've been devastated lately I even find it difficult to put things together and I said let me hear this maybe this will relieve me I'll be able to go back to my normal life this is Pencil and Eraser channel my name is Alice Olaf Sikolawale. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. And uh, hit the bell notification to know when I drop new videos. Also, like my video, watch them, share them, let your friends see, see them. And do well also to watch other videos. That's something for you. And perhaps there is something you need that I don't have. Please reach out to me, tell me, and I need a video on so 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 so. And gladly I will oblige you. Thank you very much. We pray for peace in Afghanistan. We pray for peace in Syria. We pray for peace in South Sudan. We pray for peace in Northeast Nigeria. We pray for peace in Ukraine and anywhere there is war crisis humanitarian crisis earth crisis around our world may the good lord the god of peace send peace to those regions thank you very much see you soon your health is important god is jealous and if you know of any way to help people of ukraine to send aids to them maybe through save the children through WHO, UNICEF, U, UNFPA, and so on and so forth, please do. Let's send medical supplies. Let's help them financially to rebuild their city. Uh, uh, there are cities that have been destroyed. I know very soon, by the grace of God, this war, this war will come to an end. And the people of Ukraine will be able to go back to their normal life. Those that have lost families, husband, their mother, their children, pray that God will give them the fortitude to bear the loss and to be able to move on with their life. Thank you very much. See you soon.